Okay, so today we are going to discuss about legislative procedure in parliament. That is the procedure that you have to follow to pass different types of bills in parliament. And we will also see how budget is passed in parliament. Okay. Now, we have already discussed about different types of bills in earlier classes. Can you think of some types of bills which we have discussed? Right, you have ordinary bills. Yes, money bills. Financial bills. And you have constitutional amendment bills. These are different types of bills which can be introduced in parliament. Okay. Now the procedure is almost the same for all these types of bills with certain differences. Settle down fast. Okay, so the procedure that you have to follow to pass ordinary bills, money bills, constitutional amendment bills, financial bills may differ in some respects. Okay, so first we will look at the procedure for ordinary bills and then compare, compare it with other types of bills. Procedure to pass ordinary bills in parliament. Okay. Now the definition for money bill is given in article 110 and the definition for financial bills type 1 is given in article 117 class 1 and the definition for financial bills type 2 is given in article 117 class 3. Okay. So all these types of bills have very specific definitions in the constitution. Okay. Now let us look at ordinary bills. If a bill does not fall under any of these three criteria, then you will call it as an ordinary bill. If a bill is not a money bill, not a financial bill, not a constitutional amendment bill, then you will call it as an ordinary bill. So you have a negative definition for ordinary bill. A bill which is not money bill, a bill which is not financial bill and a bill which is not constitutional amendment bill will be called as an ordinary bill. Okay. Now, what about constitutional amendment bills? What is the definition? A bill which seeks to amend the constitution or any provision in the constitution will be called as a constitutional amendment bill. Okay. Now, there are several steps which are followed in parliament to pass ordinary bills. The first step is termed as first reading. The first step in passage of ordinary bills in parliament is called as first reading. Now what happens? Generally what happens is a minister or the government wants to introduce a particular bill in parliament, right? Now, each ministry has its own domain. Finance ministry deals with finance matters and finance financial bills. Whereas you see uh, ministry of HRD may deal with bills related to education and health. Ministry of women and child development will deal with bills related to women and children. Okay, so the concerned minister will introduce a particular bill in parliament. Now please remember ordinary bills can be introduced either by a minister or by a private member. Okay, ordinary bills can be introduced. The first thing that you have to remember is ordinary bills can be introduced either by a minister or a private member. Who is a private member? Any person, any member of parliament who is not a minister is a private member. 
okay so ordinary bills can be introduced either by a minister or by a private member and they can be introduced either in lok sabha or rajya sabha ordinary bills can be introduced either in lok sabha or in rajya sabha now on one fine day a concerned minister wants to introduce a bill what he will do is first he will draft the bill along with his ias officers ips officers he will get the draft bill and he will stand up in the parliament and he will ask for leave of the house minister or a private member who wants to introduce a bill in lok sabha or rajya sabha would first ask for leave of the house okay it is simply a minister standing up and saying i want to introduce a particular bill so you please allow me to introduce this bill okay so that is the meaning of asking leave of the house so a minister will stand up will ask for leave of the house and he will introduce the bill in parliament whether it is in lok sabha or rajya sabha okay let us first discuss about lok sabha it can be introduced either in lok sabha or rajya sabha we will take a hypothetical example of introduction in lok sabha the minister will stand up he will ask for leave of the house and he will introduce the bill in lok sabha generally when a minister in, is introducing a bill he will read the objectives of the bill he will read the title of the bill and he will also read the objectives of the bill that is the meaning of introducing a bill in the house the title of the bill and the, and the objectives of the bill are read in the house by the minister or by the private member okay and here what you have to remember is you do not require prior recommendation of the president to introduce ordinary bills in parliament prior recommendation of president is not required to introduce ordinary bills in parliament a minister can directly ask for leave of the house and introduce the bill he does not require prior recommendation of president to introduce a bill an ordinary bill okay now once this introduction of bill happens in the same stage of first reading the bill is also published in gazette once the bill is introduced in the house immediately discussion will not happen on the bill the ministers require or the members of parliament require some time to go through the bill right they have to read the bill the provisions of the bill the principles of the bill now all this will require some time so after introdu introduction of bill in a house the bill will be published in the gazette okay gazette is simply a place where we store all the bills rules regulations orders all these will be stored in one place called gazette okay so once bill is introduced it will be published in gazette of india and once it is published in gazette it is open for everyone to read not only the members of parliament even citizens of india anyone who wants to read the bill can go through the bill so it is for public record okay now once a bill is published in gazette of india your first step in passing a bill is over okay so introduction of a bill in the house and publication in the gazette together will constitute first reading of the bill both these steps together will constitute first reading of the bill okay now sometimes 
a minister may not ask for the leave of the house he can directly introduce the bill this happens when a bill is published in the gazette before introduction what is the procedure that we have seen so far first is asking for the leave of the house then introduction then publication in gazette right sometimes a bill can be directly published in the gazette without following the first two steps in that case a minister need not ask for the leave of the house to introduce the bill okay now who gives permission to directly publish in the gazette it is the presiding officer of the house in which you are introducing the bill if the presiding officer gives permission a bill can be directly published in the gazette if a bill is directly published in the gazette without following these two steps then the minister or the private member need not ask for the leave of the house to introduce a bill okay so basically in introduction of bill and publication in gazette will constitute the first reading of the bill okay then the second step is second reading of the bill now when first reading of the bill happens in a house we have seen that discussion does not happen on the bill the minister simply reads out the title and the objectives and as soon as introduction of bill happens the bill is published in gazette so so far no discussion has happened on the bill right now it is in the second reading of the bill that the principles of the bill and the provisions of the bill are discussed in the first reading no discussion happens all the discussion happens in the second reading of the bill okay now the second reading has three sub stages the second reading has three sub stages the first sub stage is a stage of general discussion is the stage of general discussion now in this stage of general discussion only the broad principles of the bill only the broad principles of the bill are discussed but individual clauses and sections of a bill are not discussed at this stage at the stage of general discussion only the broad principles of the bill are discussed but individual clauses and sections are not discussed okay for example if the government introduces let's say data protection bill in lok sabha right now at the stage of general discussion as i mentioned only broad discussion on the principles of the bill are discussed right so what are the broad principles which the government has followed in drafting the data protection bill how is it protecting the privacy of individuals what is the relationship or data relationship between the government and the citizen and what is the data relationship between private entities or corporate entities and citizens these are all broad principles in a data protection bill but individual sections and clauses of the bill are not discussed at this stage only the broad principles followed by the government are discussed take another example citizenship amendment act now what are the broad principles of citizenship amendment act citizenship amendment act recently passed act uh, 2019 now the broad principle of citizenship amendment act is that it wants to fast track citizenship of those who have faced religious persecution in our neighboring countries this is the broad principle of the bill 
right so only this broad principle is discussed at this stage but individual sections and clauses of the bill are not discussed okay now this is stage of general discussion now once general discussion happens on a bill there are various options available in front of the house okay the first option is the bill can be taken into consideration immediately once general discussion happens the house has the option of taking the bill into consideration immediately what is the meaning of taking into consideration voting. no not voting discussing the individual clauses of the bill the meaning of taking into consideration is the house will get into details of the bill and it will discuss individual clauses of the bill that is the meaning of house taking consideration okay so the house has this option of taking into consideration immediately then it also has the option of referring the bill to a select committee or a joint committee the house has the option of referring the bill to a select committee or a joint committee and it also has the option of circulating the bill for public opinion so after general discussion the house can directly take the bill into consideration that is go into the details of the bill or it can refer the bill to a select or a joint committee or it can circulate the bill for public opinion okay any of these steps can be taken by the house generally if it is an important bill those bills are referred to a select or a joint committee now what is a select committee what is a joint committee select committee consists of only those members in which the bill is introduced for example if the bill is introduced in lok sabha select committee will have only members of lok sabha okay now joint committee joint committee will not only have members from the house in which bill is introduced it will also have members from the other house for example if the bill is introduced in lok sabha joint committee may have members from both lok sabha and rajya sabha okay so the house has the option of referring the bill either to a select committee or to a joint committee if it is an important bill generally important bills are referred to select committees or joint committees such bills will not be taken into consideration immediately okay and this option of public opinion is exercised rarely you don't find parliament circulating bills for public opinion this happens rarely the most utilized option is select or joint committee okay now once the bill is referred to a select or joint committee you have a second sub stage called committee stage within second reading first is stage of general discussion second is committee stage now once a bill is referred to this committee this committee will go into the individual clauses and sections of the bill each and every clause will be looked at by this committee and this committee can also suggest amendments to the bill this committee can also suggest amendments to the bill okay but when this committee is suggesting amendments it should not try to change the broad principles of the bill when the committee is suggesting changes to the bill it should not alter the principles of the bill within the principles of the bill the committee can suggest changes okay now after the committee stage you have consideration stage
now once the house receives the report from the committee once the house receives the report on the bill from the committee then the report along with the bill will be discussed in the consideration stage once the committee has gone through the bill it will submit a report to the house the report as well as individual clauses of the bill are discussed at consideration stage okay now it is in this consideration stage that individual clauses will be voted upon it is in the consideration stage that individual clauses will be voted upon now please pay attention we are not voting on the entire bill we are only voting upon the individual clauses of the bill okay so the house at this stage will only vote on individual clauses not the entire bill each clause will be taken into consideration discussion will happen on the clause and the house can express its opinion by voting on that clause whether to accept this clause or not now at this stage amendments can also be moved by the members to various clauses in the bill for example clause 1 is being discussed right now members of opposition or other members in parliament can move amendments to these clauses and if these amendments are accepted by the house then it will become part of the bill amendments will become part of the bill if they are accepted by the house are you able to follow so far at consideration stage individual clauses are discussed when individual clauses are being discussed members of the house can move amendments to these clauses if these amendments are accepted by the house then it will become part of the bill and the clause will be changed accordingly okay so this is consideration stage now once consideration stage is over we get into the third stage of passing a bill that is third reading now in third reading of a bill voting happens not on individual clauses but the entire bill in the stage of third reading voting does not happen on individual clauses it happens on the entire bill whether to accept the bill or reject the bill that is the only discussion in front of the house whether to accept or reject a bill now at this stage amendments cannot be moved amendments can be moved only in the consideration stage in the stage of third reading the discussion will be confined to whether to accept the bill or not amendments cannot be moved to the clauses of the bill okay now when do we say that bill is accepted by the house when can we say that bill is accepted by the house what is that majority right 50% of those present in voting plus 1 if the bill receives these many number of votes then we say that the house has accepted the bill if the majority of members present in voting accept the bill then you say that bill has been accepted by the house simple majority because we are discussing about ordinary bills ordinary bills only require simple majority to be passed by parliament so if majority of the members present in voting in the house have accepted the bill then we say that the house has accepted the bill
okay now this is the third stage then we get into the fourth stage of sending the bill to the other house once the bill has been accepted by one house it will be sent to the second house now since we have introduced in lok sabha and lok sabha has passed the bill the bill will now be sent to rajya sabha okay now once the bill enters rajya sabha all the steps that we have discussed so far with the first house will also happen in the second house okay once the bill enters the second house you will have first reading second reading and third reading it will pass through all these three stages once again in the second house and the second house ke amendment yes we'll come to it now let us see what are the options which the second house has the first option is to accept the bill is to accept the bill in the manner in which the first house has passed the second house has the option of accepting the bill in the manner in which the first house has passed the bill that is the second house has not made any amendments to the bill it has simply accepted whatever the first house has said it has accepted the bill in the manner in which the first house has passed then it also has the option of rejecting the bill it has the option of rejecting the bill that is the bill has not secured a simple majority in the second house okay then the third option is passing the bill with some amendments that is the second house has not accepted the bill or passed the bill in the same manner in which the first house has passed it has made some changes or amendments to certain clauses in the bill okay then the fourth option is not taking any action not taking any action for a period of 6 months not taking any action for a period of 6 months these are the four options which the second house will have okay if the bill is introduced first in rajya sabha then lok sabha will also have all these four options we have only taken one hypothetical example of bill being introduced in lok sabha but if a bill is let's say introduced in rajya sabha then lok sabha which is the second house will also have all these four options accepting the bill in the manner in which the first house is passed rejecting the bill or passing the bill with certain amendments or not taking any action on the bill for a period of 6 months clear so far now let's see what will be the fate of the bill in all these four options if the bill is accepted in the same manner in the second house in which it was passed by the first house then it will be sent to president 
if the bill is accepted in the same manner by the second house the bill will be considered as passed by the parliament and it will be sent to the president okay and if president gives his assent then the bill will become an act clear now let us look at the second option what will happen if the bill is rejected by the second house if the bill is rejected by the second house if the second house has not taken any action for a period of 6 months or if the amendments made by the second house are not acceptable to the first house if the bill is rejected by the second house or if the second house has not taken any action for a period of 6 months or if the amendments made by the second house is not acceptable to the first house in these three situations we say that there is a deadlock in parliament about that bill okay in these three situations we say that a situation of deadlock has arisen in the parliament now please uh, pay attention the second house has made certain amendments to the bill if these amendments are acceptable to the first house then the bill will be considered as passed by parliament if the amendments made by the second house are acceptable to the first house then the bill will be considered as passed by parliament and it will be sent to president only if the amendments made by the second house are not acceptable to the first house then we say that situation of deadlock has arisen okay so there are two situations in which the bill will be passed by parliament and there are three situations of deadlock clear now how to know it is acceptable or not it will be passed again to the first house and again there will be voting there will be discussion on the amendments and there will be voting on the newly uh, formed bill again okay acceptable in the sense it it has to be again passed by the first house with simple majority what is the meaning of acceptable secure the majority right if the if the second house has made certain amendments to the bill and pass the bill with these amendments then the bill will be again transferred to the first house voting again happens in the first house and if the bill in its new form secure simple majority again then we say that bill is passed by parliament now let us send it to president okay whereas in the other three situations we have deadlock now what will happen when there is deadlock right whenever there is deadlock on ordinary bills please remember we are only discussing about ordinary bills when there is a deadlock on ordinary bills then the president of india will call for a joint sitting when there is deadlock on ordinary bills president of india will call for a joint sitting and in the joint sitting the bill will be discussed and voted upon again in the joint sitting 
the bill will be discussed and voted upon once again. Now, since the strength of Lok Sabha is much higher than the strength of Rajya Sabha, the house which wins the battle is always the Lok Sabha. Okay. Now, in the joint sitting, if the bill secures simple majority, then we say that bill is passed by parliament, it will be sent to president. If the bill is passed in joint sitting, it will be sent to president. Even in the joint sitting, it must gain individual simple majority or captain? Simple majority. Individual captain. Everyone will sit together and all the members who are present and voting in the joint sitting. If majority of the members who are present and voting in the joint sitting has accepted the bill, then we say that parliament has accepted the bill. Not individual. Ma'am, the bill is sent back to reconsideration to the first house. It goes through the entire process again, like the first, second, third reading. With you mean sent back to reconsideration by the president? No, uh, from the second house to the first house, uh, when the second house sends it back with amendments. Right. It has to go through the entire process again. No, only the changes will be discussed. Whatever new changes have happened to various clauses in the bill, they will be discussed and voted upon. And again, the entire bill will be put to, put to vote once again. Once joint sitting happens, if it is passed in the joint sitting, it will be sent to the president and if the president gives his assent, then the bill will become an act. Now what if the joint sitting has rejected the bill? Right, it will end. The bill will end. Now let us look at the procedure which we have to follow for money bills. Money bill has a very specific definition given in article 110. Now what is this definition? Bill which deals with following provisions. Bill which deals only with following provisions. Bill which deals only with the following provisions will be called as a money bill. First is imposition, abolition or remission of any tax. Imposition, abolition or remission of any tax. Borrowing of union government. Custody of consolidated fund of India and contingency fund. Custody of consolidated fund of India and contingency fund of India. Payment of money into consolidated fund and contingency fund. Withdrawal of money from consolidated and contingency funds. Appropriating money in consolidated fund. Appropriation of money from consolidated fund. Receipt of money into public account. Audit of these accounts, audit of consolidated contingency funds and public accounts, audit of appropriation accounts, charged expenditure.
if a bill deals with or and only with these provisions then it will be certified by the speaker as a money bill a bill which deals with taxation a bill which deals with borrowing a bill which deals with receipt of money into consolidated fund public account and contingency fund and appropriation of money from consolidated fund utilization of money in public account and contingency fund audit of these accounts and charged expenditure okay so if a bill deals only with these provisions then it will be certified as money bill now please pay attention to the word only money bills will only deal with these provisions it will not contain any other provisions okay if the, if a bill has certain provisions under article 110 and it also has some other provisions of general legislation then it will not be certified as a money bill or it should not be certified as a money bill okay you cannot include matters of general legislation in a money bill it has to deal only with these provisions only then the speaker should certify a bill as a money bill is it clear now what is the procedure to pass a money bill in parliament the same procedure that we have followed for ordinary bill will also be followed for money bill first reading second reading then what is the difference the difference is money bill can be introduced only in lok sabha money bill can be introduced only in lok sabha and not in rajya sabha and money bills can be introduced only by ministers and not by private members only ministers can introduce money bills not private members and money bill requires prior recommendation of president to be introduced in a house money bills require prior recommendation of the president to introduce in lok sabha okay then what is the other difference the other difference visa we procedure to be followed is the options which rajya sabha has visa we money bills options which rajya rajya sabha has visa we money bills these are four differences between ordinary bills and money bills ordinary bills can be introduced both in lok sabha and rajya sabha whereas money bills only in lok sabha ordinary bills can be introduced both by ministers and private members whereas only ministers for money bills third difference is ordinary bills do not require prior recommendation to be introduced in the house whereas money bills require prior recommendation of president and the fourth difference is the options which rajya sabha has vis a vis ordinary bills and money bills okay so what are the options which rajya sabha has if it if it is a second house it can accept the bill it can reject the bill it can amend the provisions of the bill and it can not take any action for 14 days sorry 6 months okay now let us look at the options which rajya sabha has vis a vis money bills rajya sabha cannot reject a money bill rajya sabha has no option to reject a money bill rajya sabha cannot reject a money bill and it cannot also amend a money bill rajya sabha cannot amend a money bill then what can it do the only option which rajya sabha has is to make certain recommendations within 14 days and send the bill back to lok sabha the only option which rajya sabha has vis a vis money bills is to make certain recommendations and send the bill back to lok sabha
okay so this is the only option which rajya sabha has if it wants certain changes in the money bill it can make certain recommendations that so and so clause has to be changed in this manner it can only make these recommendations and send the bill back to lok sabha within 14 days now what will happen if the bill is not sent back to lok sabha within 14 days it will be considered as passed by lok sabha if a bill if a money bill is sent to rajya sabha and the rajya sabha has not sent it back to lok sabha within 14 days then it will be considered as passed by rajya sabha is it clear you have understood no Six months is for ordinary bills, not for money bills. 